Hi, I'm Stephen with Alberta Urban Garden Welcome to my garden. This is a home garden field trial episode. So through the great response of the community, we showed you the results from my garden and you had a bunch of questions. We're going to do the best we can to answer some of those questions. The first set of questions that we got was bas basically soil characteristics, pH, trace amounts, you know, this, that, and the other thing. So what we've actually done is we've submitted samples to an analytical chemistry lab, and in a future episode, we'll have the results. The other part is judging the, the, the product claims. So Rock Dust specifically claims that through amending our soil, you will be able to get more nutrient dense produce from that. May not necessarily yield higher, but it'll be healthier for you. So by taking a look at um, some videos and some product claims, the Brix tester kind of bubbled to the top as a, as a meter that, that will allow you to figure out the nutrient density of your food from your garden. A Brix tester measures the refractive value of the juices typically from your produce. It's commonly used to measure peak sugar content typically for eating or wine producing grapes. Most Brix testers have a detection limit of 0.2%. Does a BRICS tester or refractometer measure nutrient density of vegetables we eat? In order to measure something, we have to define what we want to measure. The most common definition of nutrient density is the relationship between the nutrients, such as vitamins and minerals, to calories. Most macronutrients, such as sugars and proteins, are required in large quantities by humans for the purposes of energy production. The non-energy producing elements we need in higher concentrations are calcium, sodium, chloride, magnesium, and potassium. The Brix tester is sensitive enough to pick up changes in the macronutrients and the minerals we've just touched on. However, you are unable to tell if it's a caloric or mineral component that has changed. Most of the detectable minerals can be found in a variety of vegetable and other dietary sources. For more information, there are links in the description below. Micronutrients are included in the non-energy producing dietary requirements for us. Micronutrients, or trace minerals, are required in small quantities, typically under 100 milligrams per day or less. If, for instance, you take phosphorus, which typically has one of the highest concentrations of the micronutrients in food, you have, say, 631 milligrams in an 88 gram sample. This is equivalent to 0.0073% of the total weight. Even combining all of the micronutrients, Massive increases in concentrations are well below the 0.2% detection limit of a Brix meter. What does this mean for using the Brix tester to measure the nutrient density of food? It can detect some nutrients, however concentrations of the caloric compounds of food is typically larger than the macronutrients the Brix testers can detect, and the vast majority are undetectable. You also cannot tell which component of the produce is causing any increase or decrease. It is important to state that the nutrient density does not imply bioavailability. What does this mean? Well, the food you eat may be nutrient dense, but the nutrients may be in a form your body cannot use. Following through with our trial, I would like to take a look at rock dust, and the claims that the brick tester or refractometer can measure the trace elemental increase in the fruit grown in rock dust amended soil. The concentrations based on the certificate of analysis for the trace elements are far too small in quantities for the bricks tester to pick up. So what you can do with the bricks tester is you can measure the produce coming from your garden, the bricks reading, and measure it from the grocery store. So what you should find in that is when, when they pick say a bell pepper or a tomato to ship it off to a grocery store near you, they typically pick it unripe so that it ships better, it'll ripen on the way, and by the time it gets to the grocery store it's beautiful red and it it's, looks, looks appetizing. What you should see 
is a difference in the BRICS readings. Because what happens when you actually clip that uh, unripe vegetable from the plant is sugar production stops. And what you should see is the ones that you pick nice and juicy red from your garden will have a higher BRICS reading because as that fruit was ripening, it was still attached to the plant, allowing it to continue to develop its sugars. And on a side benefit, if you're into making wine like I am, you can actually find out the peak ripeness of your fruit so that you can have the highest sugar content in there for wine production. Based on your feedback, we've submitted some soil and tissue samples to the lab for analysis. Some of the questions that came up had to do with pH, nutrient availability, and the trace elements found within the soil. So we're going to measure all three of those. And in the tissue, we're going to measure the what's called total metals or total trace elements in there to see if there's a difference in the rock dust versus the control versus the biochar, or if there's no difference on an elemental level. I'd like to thank One Yard Revolution for assisting in this video. If you haven't already, go check his channel out. I highly recommend it. If you've missed any of the home garden field trial videos and would like to catch up, please click the link to go to the playlist. Thank you for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.